Imagine you're a person working in an office 100 years in the future and you realize you've run out of paper clips. Frustrated, you turn to your super smart artificial intelligence robot assistant and say, make sure I never run out of paper clips again. The robot, doing as it's told, goes about learning how to acquire every single paper clip it can, every single paper clip in existence. Once it's collected all of those, it teaches itself how to make paper clips, gathering all the resources like iron it needs to do this. Eventually, it's used up all the iron in the entire world making paper clips and starts to figure out what else it can use. Humans have iron in their blood, so why not use them to make paper clips? Eventually, the entire planet becomes paper clips, and then the entire universe. Your trusty AI robot has made sure you never, ever will run out of paper clips again. This is a bizarre scenario, but it represents a real concern for researchers theorizing about the future of artificial intelligence. If we created super smart machines, Machines that are way smarter than us, would they destroy us? And if this could happen, wouldn't it make sense for us to teach our machines to care about us? Can we even do that? We should probably take a second to clarify a few things. Artificial intelligence is a big wide term used to describe all types of software and machines. Basically, it means technology that performs tasks that normally would require a human brain to execute. One misconception is that AI is synonymous with robots. Robots can be a house for AI, but it isn't AI itself. Also, we use the term AI a lot to talk about technology of the future. We use AI right now. We just don't call it that because we've integrated it so much into our lives. Computer scientists say we are on the cusp of an artificial intelligence revolution. Autonomous robots and computers that are able to think and make decisions on their own are no longer a sci-fi fantasy. AI has the potential to predict natural disasters and diagnose cancer better than humans ever could. Many researchers predict we will have AI with human-level intelligence within the next 50 years. Humans have dominated the planet because we are the smartest. We won the evolutionary game of roulette because of our brain power. But when AI becomes smarter than us, what will happen next? The robot apocalypse has certainly become a popular plotline for Hollywood movies, but the rise of the machines and the extinction of the human race is an actual threat according to AI researchers. Ariel Khan is the Director of Media and Outreach at the Future of Life Institute. We focus on existential risks primarily. Uh, so we're looking at especially ways that technology could potentially destroy humanity. So are we all destined to die in the coming robot apocalypse because of super intelligent AI? I have not heard of any AI researcher yet who thinks that that's going to happen. No one is worried about robots deciding that humans need to die. I think a lot of our worries are this idea of competence, that we ask the program to do something and it's so focused on doing that that it's not as concerned about what sort of damage it does in the process. We're nowhere near creating super intelligent AI, but the concern isn't that our machines will eventually turn against us. It's that they won't be able to consider how their actions impact us meaning a machine has to be able to figure out if it should do something, not just if it can do something. And also, how can the machines learn these values on their own? Clues might lie in how we teach ourselves how to care about each other. Empathy is feeling with someone instead of feeling for someone. It makes a large part of what has come to be known as emotional intelligence, or EQ. An emotionally intelligent person may be considered well-adjusted, considerate, and not impulsive. An example is understanding that your boss's angry outbursts might not be because they're a jerk, but might be because of the enormous amount of stress they're under. It is tapping into our deep human hardwiring and understanding the causes and effects of emotions. Research studies have tied high EQ to better job performance, strong leadership, and superior problem solving. Emotional intelligence is something we try to teach from a very young age. It's essential to help us learn how to function in a world with other people. Hi, I'm Jess, and I'm an elementary school teacher. Jess spends a lot of time teaching her students about their emotions. It's really important that we label emotions and teach them to students. Like a child could be crying, but they don't know that that means sad unless you teach them that when someone's crying, that usually means that they're feeling sad. Unless you know what the word to describe the way you're feeling is, that emotion really doesn't mean that much. Artificial intelligence is still in its infancy, so teaching it to understand emotions is a long way off probably. But we are beginning to teach our machines how to recognize emotions. 
The MIT Deep Empathy AI scrubs the photo sharing site Flickr for pictures of the Syrian civil war and asks internet users to choose which ones give them more of an emotional reaction so it can understand what images make us feel more empathetic. In the next five years, integrating AI with emotional intelligence is projected to be a multi-billion dollar industry. David Hansen creates robots that have facial recognition software that can see a person smile or frown and mimic that. Companies have programmed their customer service chatbots to recognize angry customers and respond sympathetically. Google has hired comedians to make their personal assistants sound friendlier. We're still nowhere close to getting AI to care about us. That is a very human thing after all. But we have already experienced how they can make us feel something. AlphaGo is an AI that plays the board game Go. Go is a 2,500-year-old game that is considered more complex than chess. It's super complicated and mastery of the game is incredibly difficult. 18-time world champion Lisa Dahl is one of the best Go players in the world, and in 2016, Lee sat down to play a five-game series against AlphaGo. During the second game, something happened that left the Go community stunned. Ooh. That's a very that's Ooh. a very surprising move. Move 37 has become immortalized in the Go community. When AlphaGo played a move that was so unexpected that it totally threw Sadal off his game. Lee has left the room. He left the room after that. He left that the room move. after that move. The Go community was shocked because the move was something a human would never ever do, creating a possibility that no one had anticipated. AlphaGo had shown human players how to view the ancient game in an entirely new way. We saw through the eyes of a computer and felt something deeply human. All of this stuff about super intelligent AI is theoretical and really hard to figure out, and when it comes to the potential destruction of humanity, pretty scary. But for many, the limitless possibilities of artificial intelligence, what it can do for us, how it can help us, and even what it can teach us, far outweighs the dangers. The whole reason we're trying to figure out how to design it safely is because we think it could be really good and that it's worth taking the time to do it right. We just need to make sure we're creating it with all of humanity in mind. What are some of the ways you think artificial intelligence is going to help us in the future? Comment below and like and subscribe for more Cheddar deep dives and breakdowns.